So a lot of people are saying that the, uh, the original polling, or the, the polls were, were pretty different than what how we've seen so far. How does that happen? Well, I thought about that and I actually went back to um, 2016 and you know, pretty much the, the vote that came back last night was pretty similar to what happened in 2016. Um, you know, the polls I think prior to election day showed uh, Biden with a three to four point uh, lead here in Ohio with maybe a margin of error, three to four points. And I think they came back yesterday uh, with, with uh, Trump winning Ohio by uh, eight points. So uh, you know, the discussion that's been going on thus far, which happened in 2016, a couple of points came up. Um, you know, first, you know, there's a belief out there, I think, that um, some individuals are contacted as part of a polling um, operation. They're necessarily hesitant to disclose their support of President Trump due to just some of the negative um, perceptions that are associated with them. And I think that, you know, there's a concern that by um, outwardly worldly, uh, admitting to supporting his position that they're going to be grouped along uh, with those character traits and perceptions as well, too. Uh, so, you know, that's something that probably happened back in 2016 and, and, and continued again this past uh, election cycle. Um, you know, the other point that uh, has been discussed is that, uh, you know, there's, as part of this, these polling results may also indicate a mistrust of mainstream media, you know, which is consistent with uh, some of the positions and, uh, uh, and ideas espoused by, uh, by President Trump. So uh, similar to that, uh, the uh, poll, the voters are sometimes, I think, hesitant to disclose, again, those, um, that support of President Trump to um, mainstream media. And that's a lot what we're seeing in these polling uh, uh, operations are, are typically mainstream media polling uh, organizations, at least the ones that, that I've seen here in this election cycle. So that, you know, so moving forward and into the next elections too, the next couple of years, is it worth even looking at polls anymore or, or is that, are those statistics not worth it? Well, you know, that's a good question. And I, I think that's a question that a lot of the, uh, uh, the political pundits and, uh, uh, and, and, and parties are, are left to answer. Um, you know, there are a few polling organizations out there. Um, we one back in 2016 and, and I think one this year uh, as well too that, you know, that did come closer to um, their model in this, poll in this cycle, at least as we sit here today. Um, how do you think of the president prematurely uh, saying that he, he won the election? Are there legal issues that come with that? Well, you know, there's a few, a few ways that I look at that. Um, you know, I, I think I look at that in, as, as an American and as a, an election law attorney. Um, you know, we're a democracy. Uh, we're not an authoritarian regime. We're not a third world country. Um, we count votes and we count all of the legally cast votes. And um, uh, as we've seen here, some of the states due to the laws operate or the laws enacted in different straight, different states, uh, they count their ballots in a different timetable, different fashion. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's anything suspect, um, any problems with the integrity of the election. Uh, these counting of um, uh, and tabulation of ballots, they're, uh, they're conducted in a bipartisan manner. And oftentimes you have to have a Republican and a Democrat uh, present, whether it's in the counting aspect or in the trans, uh, transportation of ballots. So. Uh, there's a conscious effort to ensure that the elections are transparent and that they're conducted in a fair bipartisan uh, manner. And uh, I think uh, the, the president's comments last night uh, uh, don't necessarily uh, comport with that, that notion and that idea.
And uh, the other thing, too, making these campaign speeches uh, at the White House, is there any kind of legality that goes with that, too? Well, you know, there's, uh, there's a law known as the Hatch Act. And, you know, it essentially precludes federal employees from uh, conducting uh, political activities on uh, on federal time, on federal work time, uh, with uh, federal resources and dollars. Um, however, the president is exempt from the Hatch Act. Um, so, you know, a lot of what we see right now, uh, you know, the, you know, the remedy for addressing some of those concerns is really just, you know, for um, public discussion uh, about whether or not we, as the uh, the voting public, you know, think that's appropriate or not. Um, so I guess finally, too, you know, depending on how the next couple of days go, if it's just so head to head, are we? Is there any worry that we might see this go to the Supreme Court, like in 2000? Well, you know, that that's something I think that the president uh, offered. Uh, last night a request to send it to the Supreme Court, but there's a whole lot that has to happen here. And a lot of the recount, uh, I shouldn't say recount, a lot of the counting and tabulation issues, uh, counting that's going on right now, you know, these are simply state law claims. Um, they don't involve uh, federal laws or constitutional rights at this point. Um, and in, from that perception, uh, you know, the Supreme Court is hesitant to get involved um, or is unable to get involved in, in those uh, scenarios. Um, I just saw prior to coming out here that uh, uh, the Trump campaign did just file a lawsuit in federal court, uh, it looks as if to, um, to put a halt to the, uh, the counting of the votes in, um, in Michigan uh, claiming that uh, their observers were not able to um, fully observe the tabulation of, of, of the ballots. Uh, so, you know, we'll see where that goes. Um, I think that was a federal court lawsuit. I don't know if it was federal or, or, or state law, but, um, but it, you know, at, at this point, uh, you know, the Supreme Court is a long ways away. I guess finally, um, throughout this whole process, how do you personally uh, feel that how will the public take this in there? How will they view our democratic uh, system moving forward? From this? Well, I think that it's important that um, our our government, our leaders um, of both political parties, come forward and advocate for the counting of all legal ballots. Um, and to really um, focus on avoiding partisan attacks on the integrity of the election process when there's been no evidence of voter fraud or anything else that the president has raised over the course of uh, you know the past few months with respect to you know the alleged allegations with the problems with the integrity of the voting process um, I think it's very important for uh, our government, our leaders, uh, and also our public, you know, to uh, come forward and and, uh, and demand that you know we uphold the integrity of that uh, that voting process.